So you want to make animations for YouTube, but you're not quite sure how to start. That's okay, because this video is about how to set up a new Adobe Animate project for YouTube. Thanks to Andrew for requesting today's video, and if there's something that you want to learn, leave it in the comments and I might make a video about it. So with that said, let's take a look at the new document window that pops up when you open Adobe Animate. Or you can also bring this window up by going to File and clicking New. The first thing you see up the top is that Adobe Animate gives you a bunch of different categories like character animation, social media, games education, so on. We want to make animation so we're just going to stick with character animation. And it doesn't really matter which preset you choose over here because we're going to change all of these settings individually. Next, we've got the width and height of the document. And you know, you might think that making it bigger is better, but because Adobe Animate is a vector-based program, you can actually make it, um, depending on what aspect ratio you want, you can make it smaller. So if you want it 1920 by 1080, you can actually divide that by half and work on a 960 by 540 canvas. This is because vector-based drawings can be scaled without losing any quality, it doesn't become blurry. And the reason you might want to work on a smaller canvas is maybe to save some space on your hard drive or if your computer isn't that great, working on a smaller canvas will improve performance. So I am going to set the size of my document to 960 by 540, which is half of 1920 by 1080p, and that's what I'm going to export it at later. The only time I wouldn't want to do this is if I was using raster images, so pixel-based, not vector images, like a painted background. The next option we have is frame rate. Frame rate can be a pretty big topic, so I'm not going to go very deep into it. 24 frames per second is the industry standard, and it's very commonly used in film and video productions for that cinematic look. It's what our eyes are used to seeing on screen because it captures a very natural amount of motion blur without looking choppy. Another good thing about animating at 24 frames per second is that there's just less frames to draw compared to 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And the last thing that we want to look at when setting up a new document is the platform type. And this might seem a bit confusing at first. We've got ActionScript 3, HTML5, and all these air options. Now we want to go with ActionScript 3, and I'll explain why in a second. I'll go through the others first, just quite briefly, so you know why we're not using them. When you use HTML5, your content is exported as HTML, JavaScript, and image files. And if you're familiar with how websites are built, you'll recognize that those files are what you put on the server to make something appear on the internet. But that's not really what you want if you're making YouTube animations. You really want to use HTML5 when you're making those banner ads that you see on some websites when you've got ad block turned off or interactive stuff like Facebook quizzes, maybe. On the other hand, Air lets you package what you've made in Adobe Animate and publish it to iOS App Store or the Android Google Play Store. I have never used it. I don't really make apps in Adobe Animate, but that's what it's for. Now let's look at ActionScript 3. ActionScript 3 is a programming language quite similar to JavaScript, but don't worry, you're not going to have to code or do any programming. It's just something that's been around since the very early stages of Adobe Animate or Flash. It can be used to add a little bit of interactivity to your projects like buttons that you can click on and things that happen after you click on the button. But I am assuming that most of us will not be doing that. The reason we want to use ActionScript 3 is because it lets us export our content as Swift, GIF or video files that we can publish to YouTube. It also lets you use a lot of features that the other platform types like HTML5 or Air doesn't like filters, blend modes, synchronized audio, and that's why it's the default option for character animation. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna click create. It's all set up. You can see the size in the 
document settings in the corner, frame rate is over here, and that's it. You're now an expert on starting new projects. Wow. Goodbye.